Hi, I'm Nate, and this is Photo Learningism. If you didn't catch last week's video, go check it out. It was about Photoshop 2021. We touched a little bit on the raw loader that's baked into Photoshop, and I wanted to compare that, stack it up against raw therapy, run them side by side, and let's just see which one has strengths, which one has weaknesses, and which one do you think works better for you? Let's do that. So once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. This is your first time. I do a lot of work on this channel to service the cheap or free art technologies so you can know about them and make good use of them. We're going to continue looking at Photoshop 2021. If you didn't get a chance to see the review video, please go check that out and get some bearings and history on what's going on. I want to look at specifically the raw loading capabilities. Uh, and I'm working with an NEF, a Nikon image here. I want to compare it with raw therapy. I've become a big fan of raw therapy, number one, because it's free and open source, but because it's very powerful and well developed by a community of dedicated folks. Really, after the vision of, of making art, making photography a, a valuable thing, they, they really do a lot of investment into this tool to make it worthwhile. I'm going to compare this tool. Again, Adobe is kind of coming out from the commercial end of things, something that was developed for the commercial audience. So let's first start with that. And I touched on this quite a bit in the initial video. So let's just bring it up here. First of all, interface again. We did speak a lot about that during the initial video, but this part is kind of difficult, I found, to grasp in that with the raw loader, it does have a very nice layout of modules here, although it breaks them into kind of a weird, all the way at the right, kind of navigation, which doesn't feel intuitive to me. Um, there is definitely a lot of power built into this tool. There's much more than I've ever seen in any other raw loader before. So let me say that it, it can only work as far as I can tell with Photoshop. So you have to have that in order to use this tool. These modules are collapsible just for workspace sake. Um, and you can work through and somewhat easily tell what they're going to do with a little bit of trial and error but this part again i feel like it could be more intuitive you do have the eyeball over here to kind of activate and disable things that was not again clear to me as something that i could do because it just kind of hangs off to an uncommon place and it's kind of like overload when you step into this for the first time and i feel like the layout the ux the user experience could have been a little more thoughtful as to where the eye is actually going to be. It's obviously going to be here because if I'm thinking about collapsing and and expanding an area, that's where I'm looking. I'm not necessarily going to be following intuitively over to the right. I know it looks cleaner that way. I just think it's the wrong place for the button. <laughs> so having said that, there is a lot of control in this tool. Really right out of this, there's a lot. It does have some really powerful options here for doing correction right in the raw loader, which is kind of unusual. I've seen masking in other uh, raw loaders. I know Dark Ther uh, sorry, Dark Table has that. Art has that, which is a fork off of the uh, raw therapy tool that we all love and use. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm not I'm not dissing uh, Dark Table by the way. Uh, but um, so this healing tool has some good possibilities in that it works like masking. I can select a place that I want to begin and where I want to end. So I'm going to drag this over and it's going to attempt to guess what I'm after. It may not always get it right, but we're going to try to pick a place here that's what we want to have blend on top of that. That's what's really happening here. And we can make some adjustments with that. We can take the feathering down so there's less blending of it. You can take the opacity down if it needs to be more transparent. This is kind of the idea behind it. It's a very clever way of trying to paint on masks. Um, and it's very innovative. I, I don't see that kind of approach in other tools. Adobe likes to do things in the form of brushes, which is kind of criticentric in a lot of ways. Um, but Adobe really is kind of the pioneer, so I'll credit Adobe with that idea. Uh, I'm not sure who was first. I'm sorry, credit if you guys uh, <laughs> in the uh, chronology of things uh, come up with that. But this is the first one I became aware of that, that had that technology. So 
Healing is a really interesting idea. Cloning is another take on that where it's a little bit more pointed about what you're borrowing and painting over something. Again, kind of like a mask clone, but kind of a mask approach. All right, so interesting idea. You can use an adjustment brush. And the reason this is cool is you'll notice how a lot of these controls over here are very similar to what you initially saw in the first section here in the edit section <laughs> it breaks them in, into more modules here the difference is that i can say okay well i only want to adjust right here all right now it hasn't shown anything yet but it's actually left a stroke there and as i start to play with that what will happen is it'll tweak just that section you can see the colors changing shape around what i've done we could manipulate the highlights within that, the exposure within that, and any of these, these variables here, pulling out the detail. There are some other options here. You may be familiar with the concept of a graduated filter, which is where you're defining where the graduation should be, and you can change that with the guides here. So it's another means of manipulation that I do see in other places. So no, it's there, but it pops up here as well. And then uh, other filters and things, which again are unusual. They're unusual to see here. So having stepped through this and worked on it, I can tell you that from here, it gets a little more interesting in that if you want to save it, there's another button up here, convert and save. These buttons down here, I think, are kind of confusing to that because done, that will make it disappear. And it won't tell you what it's done. <laughs> These buttons down here will push it into Photoshop if you want to continue the, the photo journey you're on. But this is where you actually save it. And that's, again, that feels like another interface misstep. Why, why would that be different? Why would it be in a different place than the other final controls of this window that doesn't make sense to me so that's that again this is the, the the adobe version of the raw loader and not to say it's it's not valuable lots of power lots of innovation lots of of good things built into this the interface struggles <laughs> all right now let's hop over to raw therapy all right same image when you load it you have kind of a similar approach here where the modules are on the right What's different here, though, is that you have different sections right along the top, which I will say felt a lot more intuitive when I came in here for the first time trying to make sense of this. All your controls are laid out and not all that different from from the Adobe version here, but they're laid out right in front of you here. They are collapsible. And the nice thing about the way they've done things here is that if it's something you want to enable or disable, the button, as I mentioned in the interface, is right here. Collapsing is a matter of clicking on it. And that could be clearer because, again, there's a twisty here for that. That could be better. But you can still collapse and hide, and you can enable and activate right from the side. That's where all the controls are. It makes tons of sense to do that. You can do similar... Uh, mapping here that the uh, Adobe term is texture, but here it's it's tone mapping. We can start to draw things out. Uh, the vignetting control is stronger in this tool. I will say that in that I maxed it out in the raw loader when I was playing with this before. It does not get as bold as it does in this tool. So I'm not sure why that is. I think they intended to keep it as more of a subtle effect but sometimes you don't want it to be that subtle. <laughs> you should have that kind of control. And maybe I was using it wrong. I'll, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt, but I couldn't figure out a way to get it beyond a very light touch. And that bothered me. Right. Similar to uh, the raw loader in Adobe, you have a graduated filter. It works very similarly in how you can apply the graduation of that, that toning, depending on what you have enabled. You can play with specific range adjustments here in the lab adjustments, uh, which can be helpful. 
This can also be confusing, by the way, uh, because this is a little overcomplicated for what could have been. This is going to adjust colors that you see in the image and intensify them or take them away, depending on how you adjust them. And you would have to play with the band of color that's actually in the image. I like to do something called haze removal. And again, I did find this in the raw loader in the other tool. What it's supposed to do is consider images that have a degree of haze to them, literal haze, cloudiness, and actually diminish that and pull out the details from within to try to try to eliminate that haze effect. But what you can also use it for is images that don't have haze. It will intensify almost like a really advanced saturation effect. It will pull out the tone in details with this tool, which it works very well here. It works very well in the other raw loader, but it, it's I'm pointing it out because I happen to, to find it here as well. All right, these are laid out pretty logically in the different kinds of controls. Using them does take a little bit of work, and that's something I'll note that is also not great <laughs> about uh, this tool versus the other tool, is that there's a lot of guesswork, there's a lot of trial and error, and there's not a lot of great explanation at that level as to what's actually happening. You have to be really observant about what's changing as you work on these images, and it can be very difficult to understand well, what's actually happening here. All right. It does have a lot of good control built into this. Um, sometimes I will shoot with the, uh, the it's called the fisheye, but it's really just a really wide angle that causes bending at the edges. You can correct that here uh, with the uh, distortion correction. In the other tools, it would look like something like a pinch filter. It would become kind of an anti-pinch where you're inverting it the other way. So there are other ways to do this in the other tools. So this is not necessarily special to this tool. Um, but I'm pointing it out as something that's very useful where you can kind of get rid of that bended effect. And sometimes you do want that, by the way, because that can insinuate that the world is larger. And I like that feel, that kind of the grandiose appearance to things, that things have a larger than life element to that. Um, so you may or may not want that. As you start to roll it back, it's almost like it becomes less significant. And maybe if you're trying to focus on the expanse of what you've shot, that's a good thing. But um, anyway, that's all my little rabbit trail and how that works. All right. So I really feel like there's a lot going on in this tool that I, that is very common with the other raw loader. One thing I did not see in the raw loader, which I'll point out here, and I'm going to take away the camera feed just so you can see this better, is this idea of snapshots. And what this enables you to do is you take a point in time that you want to save, and this is a temporary basis, just during the scope of what you're working on right now. And let's say that I wanted to try out some other ideas. I wanted to back this off. I wanted to desaturate and make it black and white. What does that look like? There's not any flexibility in this level for layers. You notice that in the other raw lo loader as well. It's not designed to work in layers. So you can use this as a means of capturing points along the path and taking another snapshot I'm going to click on this other one and you can see, okay, well, I could roll back in one click to where I was. If this is not going well, I made a mistake. I really don't like the things that I've tried out. Okay, well, I'm going to roll back to snapshot one. Okay, so now I'm going to try some other things. I am going to play with my exposure a bit more because maybe I want more of the background to be diminished. And I really want to notice these highlights. Okay, take another snapshot. And now I still have these, where I have all these different points in time. It's kind of like, in a weird way, solving that layering problem. So you can't really go and, and treat them exactly like layers, but you can still hop between these different snapshots and work from there if you wanted to. So again, I think it solves that problem of layers and that you can work this way. It doesn't compound them, so it's not exactly the same. That's why I do that. You can't have snapshot one, snapshot two, and then manipulate snapshot one to affect snapshot two. It's not how it works. But you can still maintain this idea of separating out changes to see what happens when you add them and take them away. 
so that's a really cool solution, at least in the raw sense of what you can do for that. And that's a plus for raw therapy that does not happen in the Adobe one. All right, but you can kind of see the different fields of play here now between what we can do in raw therapy, what you can do in the raw loader for Photoshop. There are again some fancier things here where you can do the brush adjustments. You can do very targeted changes which you cannot do in raw therapy and the other uh, tools that I've seen. Again, there are some masking controls in the ones I mentioned right now, we're focusing on raw therapy, but there's a lot of degree of, of photo manipulation control, which in a way that kind of steps outside the idea of loading, loading the raw image and tweaking it for what it is. You're really starting to get into the photo manipulation stage at that point where it kind of belongs in the full fledged tool. I think that's, starting to get on the edge of what's a bit much to put in a raw loader. It's nice to see as something like in case you want to do a very basic change or manipulation, but I wouldn't depend on this for a full scale correction of removing something. I wouldn't tend attempt that <laughs> in the raw loader. So again, those are the, those are the pieces. Those are the parts. I would encourage you try out both these tools. Raw therapy is free and open source and it's always being updated and changed by a community of people. So check that out. Also, please, please, please check out the raw, check out Photoshop 2021, but check out that raw loader coupled with that. I do believe that it offers some really interesting innovations and it could be a good fit for you. It will come with a monthly cost. So be aware of that, but there's a trial. Try it out for seven days and see how it works. See if this interface speaks to you more than the other tools because again maybe this is just me attempting to put my bias aside for other tools i've used i felt like the interface wasn't as strong but you may have a different experience because you're coming into this differently so i encourage you to try it. you lose nothing by trying the trial definitely give it a shot and see what resonates with you all right so again photoshop 2021 the raw loader and raw therapy i'll put download links in the description below and let me know if this was helpful. Give me a thumbs up if it resonated with you. Consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the other awesome projects that we'll be tackling in the future, the other tools that we have done and we will do in the future. And also consider leaving a comment because it's so great to see people getting involved, helping each other learn and solve problems and asking questions. And these questions are not just for me. Ask them with the community in mind because there's a lot of people in the same boat we're trying to figure things out and we're trying to create. So thank you for spending your time with me. See you at the next video.